welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles in the last class we have discussed about the field orientation control of a three phase induction motor the main aim of the field orientation control of induction motor is the rotor flux is perpendicular to the armature flux so that the maximum amount of torque will be developed in a induction motor the field orientation control of induction motor is broadly classified into the two types one is direct rotor flux control second one is a indirect rotor flux control in the name itself it is the direct flux control we are controlling the rotor flux directly that's why we are calling as a direct rotor flux control indirect rotor flux control means we are not measuring the rotor flux directly we are estimating the rotor flux from the stator voltage and stator current by means of an observer so from that value we are going to control the torque and speed developed in induction motor that's why we are calling as a indirect rotor flux control first we are seeing the general block diagram of a field orientation control of a induction this is a three phase induction motor this is a three phase inverter the input to the three phase inverter is the dc supply the output is a ac voltage that is given to the stator winding of a three phase induction motor see here we are measuring the stator currents and giving a feedback to the field orientation system the input to the field orientation system is a rotor flux and torque these are the reference values from these reference values the field orientation control system will be generating a reference currents to the induction motor that is ias star ibs star ics star now the actual current will be compared with a reference values those are given to the pi controller which is generating a reference voltage that reference voltage we are comparing with a carrier signal so that the pulses will be generated those pulses are given to the three phase inverter which makes the the reference current is equal to the actual current taken by the induction motor to reach the rotor flux reference value as well as the torque reference value in this manner the field orientation system will be controlling the torque developed in a induction motor next this is the d axis this is the q axis nothing but a stator frame capital d and capital q nothing but a excitation frame when you take the rotor flux on a excitation frame theta not is nothing but a angle between the rotor flux on excitation frame to the rotor flux on a stator frame by means of this angle we can convert the stator currents on a excitation frame to the stator currents on a dq frame this is a matrix which is used to for this conversion operation direct rotor flux orientation control in case of direct flux rotor orientation control we are measuring the rotor flux by keeping hall effect sensors in a stator but these these all effect sensors will be kept on a dq axis in a stator which are measuring the rotor air gap flux by means of air gap flux we can able to derive the rotor flux which we are taken as a input to the control system this is the equivalent circuit of a induction motor rs stator resistance leakage inductance of a stator winding magnetization inductance leakage inductance of a rotor winding rotor resistance this is the j omega not this is the per phase voltage with refer to the stator frame now from this circuit diagram we can write the magnetization flux on a stator frame equal to lm into ims where ims is nothing but a magnetization current on a stator frame minus lm into iss plus ir iss is nothing but a stator current on a stator frame ir s is nothing but a rotor current on a stator frame from this expression if you find the im we are getting the 1 by lm lambda ms minus ir so in this manner we can calculate the magnetization current we know that air gap flux will be differ from the rotor flux by means of all effect sensors we can measure only the air gap flux only 
but in control system we are using the rotor flux as a input so from the air gap flux we can able to deduce the rotor flux so the rotor flux in a stator frame equal to lambda m s plus l l r i r s in place of i r s you substitute the above equation final expression which is representing the lambda r s so here this is the quantity what we are measuring from the all effect sensors the remaining quantities are available so we can find out the rotor flux on a stator frame which we are using as input to the control system here we have shown the micro processor based rotor flux calculation this is the stator winding this is the rotor on the stator this is the d axis this is the q axis on the d axis and q axis we kept a two all effect sensors which are measuring the air gap flux this is nothing but a rotor flux calculator this block will be converting the stator current into the iqs and ids nothing but the stator currents will be converting into the dq stator frame again this block will be converting the rotor flux on a stator frame this is the q component this is the d component here we are using the rectangular to polar conversion which gives the lambda r and theta r this total thing is nothing but a rotor flux calculator this control block we develop based upon the previous expression here if we observe this diagram we used only the two hall effect sensors we assumed that this machine is designed for the two pole mission suppose if the machine is designed for the p pole mission then we have to use the 180 by p number of all effect sensors in a stata to measure the air gap flux lambda drs equal to lambda r that is the output here the rotor flux calculator will give the value of rotor flux the angle we are using to convert the excitation frame to the stator frame torque calculation in a induction motor we have a ias ibs ics nothing but a stator currents these stator currents were given to the abc to dq transformation from this transformation we can find the ids e and iqs e these are nothing but a stator current in a excitation frame d component q component the same currents are given to the rotor flux calculator the output of the rotor flux calculator is a lambda and theta r this theta r we are using to convert the stator excitation frame to the dq frame here we are getting the idsc on excitation frame that will be multiply with a lambda r here so when you are multiply with this these two quantities and with a torque constant so finally we are getting the the torque developed in a induction motor this block diagram is nothing but a torque calculation in a induction motor now how we are going to control the three phase induction motor in a direct flux control means this is the stator winding this is the rotor winding the total thing is nothing but a three phase induction motor we assume that this induction motor is designed for the two pole so we kept the two all effect sensors these two all effect sensors are giving input to the rotor flux calculator this rotor flux controller is giving a output of lambda r and theta r again the two inputs we have given to the torque calculator or controller not only these two inputs we are giving inputs to the input phase currents also see ias ibs ics also we are giving input to the torque controller so that the torque controller will be giving a signal proportional to the how much torque is developed in a induction motor here we have taken the rotor flux as a reference and torque how much torque is developed in induction motor that we have taken as a one more reference value the actual rotor flux will be given by the rotor flux control the actual torque will be given by the torque controller which are compared here error in a rotor flux is given to the field controller the field controller is nothing but a pi controller which is giving output of ids e star when you come to the torque controller 
the RNA torque is given to the PA controller. This is nothing but a torque controller. The output is the IQS E star. Star is representing the reference values. These two are nothing but a currents in a DQ on a stator excitation frame. By means of theta R, we are converting into the IAS E star and IA IQS E star. Nothing but a stator frame. From excitation frame to the stator frame, you are converting. Now, by means of a DQ to ABC transformation, we are converting into the reference stator currents. These reference stator currents will be compared with a actual stator currents. The erroneous stator current will be given to the PA controller. The output of the PA controller is the reference voltage. That will be compared with a triangular waveform to generate a pulses to the three phase inverter in case of a PWM technique. So, in that manner, the pulses are given to the three phase inverter and input to the three phase inverter is the DC supply. So, we can easily control the, the torque developed in a induction motor, also the rotor flux where we have taken these two are the reference inputs. In practice, the ratio of LR to LM and the rotor leakage inductance LLS which are used in a rotor flux calculator are not significantly affected by change in operating condition of the motor and the saturation of the motor and the temperature. Therefore, the field orientation control of an induction motor is a reliable control technique as well as a, it is a robust control also. However, in case of a direct rotor flux control, it requires a Hall effect sensor which are placed very carefully in the induction motor so that it will be generating a actual rotor flux. This control system requires a external sensor like a Hall effect sensor so the cost and the reliability of the drive will be more. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.